All right, now it's time to record some audio and batch it out so we don't have to do this stuff manually. Adobe Audition CS 5.5 has incredible tools for anyone recording audio that needs to chop it up in little pieces and send it out. I'm gonna record a little voiceover five times, do it five different ways, and then we'll send this out and I'm gonna retime this. So although I'm gonna take longer than 10 seconds, I want each one of these to be exactly 10 seconds long. I don't have to care about timing at all. I'll just say it and then let Adobe Audition process that for me. Let's go in. All right, I've got a microphone hooked up here right now. I've got my headset on. You can see I've got my record level going on here. And uh, when I start recording, uh, you'll just see the, the uh, recording start to go out here on track number seven. So here we go. This Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior in Adobe Audition 5.5. This Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior in Adobe Audition CS 5.5. This Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior on Adobe Audition CS 5.5. This Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior in Adobe Audition CS 5.5. Oh yeah, this Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior in Adobe Audition CS 5.5. Okay, so we had a little fun with that. Here we've got five tracks. I think it was really loud on the last one there, but here they go. I'm not gonna play all five. This Friday on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for on How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater. On How to Create a Fake Audio Track On How to Create a Fake Audio Track Theater, join Colin Smith as he Yeah, this Friday on How to Create a Fake Whoa, a little bit of macho man in the end there. All right, now that we've got our long recording selected, we need to chop that up into little pieces. And the best tool for that is diagnostics. So I need to double click on this clip Open up my diagnostics and here we're gonna mark audio. I've saved one already as Adobe TV. And basically it's going to scan and find the areas of silence and audio. And you can help it find the levels here. I've set that specifically for that. And you can see it's found these sections automatically for me. Now I put that gap in there on purpose uh, to show you how we can combine markers. So if I tweaked my, my uh, settings, then you'd, I'd be able to you know, not detect that as a silence gap. But I wanna show you how to combine markers instead because this one's really powerful. Okay, so there's all of our, uh, our settings. When I click mark all, it's created markers. Now let's go up to our markers. Double clicking on each one of these markers, it's marking that section. And you notice marker 10 and 11, because we've done this demo a few times, um, are the same, or, or they should be the same. They're different, right? So if I select both of those, shift select, and then right here, click on merge these selected markers. Now, instead of having that separate, it's now as one separate file. Okay, that's great. So let's review. Recorded a long uh, audio track of all these different voiceovers, marked these as separate files. Now we want to export those out as separate files. So if we select all of these, we've got a button that says uh, insert selected range marker into playlist. We could do that. Or I wanna export the audio of selected range markers to separate files. Click okay. And now uh, we can use the file names um, and we can add a prefix. Um, where are we putting these? Let's just browse and put these uh, in a location where we want them to show up. There we go. 
click OK. Uh, those are the settings that we're uh, using. We can include the markers and other metadata. Click OK, and <laughs> that's how fast Adobe Audition CS 5.5 is. I I'm sorry, I have to laugh every single time because I'm just not used to audio, audio processing that quickly. So we can bring in those files uh, right now. So if we go to our RAID, there's our files right there. Each one of these files is now a separate file that we can listen to and output, okay? So here's the next step. In the uh, window menu, batch process, we are going to batch these. So every one of them has to be exactly 10 seconds long. And to do that, not only do we have to put these into the batch, but we get to run a favorite. So in the favorites menu, we need to create a specific favorite. So how do we do that? I'll double click on one of these and I will start to record a favorite. Okay, it's telling me it's recording that favorite. Click OK. Effects, time and pitch, stretch, and pitch process. So we can uh, use some of these presets in here to make things faster, double talker, but I specifically want a new duration here. So regardless of what the original is, the current duration is 13 seconds. I'm going to make sure I click on lock stretch settings to new duration. This will guarantee that these settings will apply to all the other files too. They'll all end up at 10 seconds. Um, I want this to be zero minutes and 10 seconds, and I don't want uh, any uh, change in pitch, and if I play this. This Friday on how to create a fake audio track theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10. Okay, so I'm gonna save this as a preset. If I need that later, 10 seconds, click okay, okay. And now when I go to my favorites, I can stop recording favorites. Notice that I'm doing that while it's still processing the file in the background. Remember, Audition CS 5.5 has this incredible new engine, so I could be processing the file, saving the favorites, doing many things at the same time. So we will say length to 10 seconds. Click OK. All right, so I've already done this file, so let's uh, undo that. We go to our history because I want to do all of these. And I'm going to be using our favorite here on all of these files. So window menu, batch process. And we've got each one of these files to bring in. So that's the long one. So let's grab these, two, three, four, five. Drag them in and batch. Up at the top, apply favorite, length to 10 seconds. Um, I'm just gonna leave the names where they are. Let's put these also in the same location. So back out on my RAID, voiceover, create a new folder, 10 seconds. Okay, um, we can overwrite existing files if we had them. That's the format, the sample type. We can include markers and other metadata. Click OK. And you can see it working away directly in here. So remember, this is a complete multitasking environment, so I could get to work on other things while this is batch processing in the background. You can see it's doing each one of the files, and they're showing up over here. And when it's done, we'll stick them in a multi-track sequence and check out what we finally have. Okay. So there they are. Let's close that up and select those. Grab a new multi-track sequence. Okay. Let's get rid of this original one and drop these inside here. So we'll make sure that each one is exactly 10 seconds long. And we also will have the pitch be exactly the same. To create a fake audio track theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 seconds to create the perfect test audio track to illustrate batch processing behavior in Adobe Audition 5.5. This Friday on how to create a fake audio track theater, join Colin Smith as he rambles aimlessly for 10 I think you get the idea. I don't want to painfully put you through uh, all of that. So 
it's really important to note that this great engine inside Adobe Audition allows us to do things like this, but if you're missing things like batch processing and, and working on markers and finding uh, silence, you're missing a huge part of the automation inside Audition CS 5.5. It's there for the taking, it's there to make you way more productive, so get in there, roll up your sleeves, and start making your audio automatic. Thank <laughs> you.